let us talk about uh, the chemical modification of protein inside the Golgi vesicle. As we have to know, as we have told before that in Golgi bodies, the protein which is made in, in endoplasmic reticulum lumen, it is carried out via the COP2 vesicle and the COP inside the COP2 vesicle protein is uh, finally coming and docked with the Golgi apparatus and inside the Golgi apparatus, the protein moiety is being modified. Several types of different kinds of modification has been take place. One of those modification is the polysaccharide attachment and polysaccharide changing modification. In this different polysaccharide rearrangement modification, we will notice in this picture in a little bit more detail. Here in this picture what we have, we have a protein. In this protein, what we, s what we can see here, only one amino acid, is it is this is the backbone. This line is the backbone and one of the amino acid here is the aspergine. And this asparagine amino acid is linked with the oligosaccharide chain. As you can see, this oligosaccharide chain is uh, not a, a homopolysaccharide chain. This is a heteropolysaccharide chain because there are different types of uh, sugar moieties are present there. The green are represent uh, represents uh, glucose, blue represents mannose, and yellow represents N-acetyl glucosamine. Okay, or for example, glucnac. Okay, so this chain of protein this chain of uh, saccharides is further modified by different techniques by different uh, action of different enzymes inside the golgi apparatus to finally make a complex structure like this so in this in the final model what we have is a complex oligosaccharide linked with this protein backbone okay so here we have uh, the simple uh, form of the protein attached with this uh, oligosaccharide chain inside the Golgi. This all the system is going on will happen the inside the Golgi lumen. So as soon as the protein is produced inside the ER lumen, it is further modified. We call it the post-translational modification. And during those post-translational modification period, these moieties of sugars are added with this protein backbone. After that, what happens in ER lumen is in normal ER lumen, glu glucosidase uh, enzymes are present there. Those glucosidase enzymes are going to cleave off this glucose residues from that polysaccharide chain. And after cleaving those glucose residues, we end up with something like this. So we have no glucose present in the oligosaccharide backbone. Not only the glucose is removed, but also there are some ER manosidase uh, enzyme present, which is going to cleave the mannose residues as well. So mo most of it, all of the glucose residue uh, will be cleaved and few of mannose residues are cleaved inside the ER lumen. And finally we end up something like that. So inside the ER lumen when a protein is destined to deliver towards the Golgi apparatus, it is ready. Uh, it is ready or it is becoming uh, uh, prepared via cleaving those uh, glucose as well as some mannose residues. After we become ready, uh, they need to transfer via the COP2 vesicle. So COP2 vesicle uh, carries this protein molecules along, along with this oligosaccharide chain into the Golgi lumen. Inside the Golgi lumen, what happens, uh, there are lots of mannosidase enzyme present there. Those mannosidase enzyme cleave mannose residues from different points. Sometimes they cleave uh, in, uh, in some direction and other time they cleave in another direction. This kind of different cleaving or uh, uh, cleaving of those mannose residues uh, will result different types of uh, different types of uh, oligosaccharide chain, oligosaccharide chain which, which uh, differ in their signaling procedure. So, uh, for instance, this kind of signaling chain uh, will help to give a signal uh, to the protein to talk to the mitochondria, for example. In another case, uh, some other types of uh, signaling chain will help it to dock to the uh, to the cell membrane. So this this kind of signaling can be done via the presence of this oligosaccharide moieties. Okay. Now, after cleaving those mannose residues via the Golgi mannosidase, there are lots there are enzymes like N-acetyl glucosamine transferase. This N-acetyl glucosamine transferase transfers the N-acetyl glucosamine uh, sugar moiety. Uh, to this mannose residues. They link those moieties to this mannose residues. Okay, so the transferase comes in along with the UDP. So we have the N acetyl glucosamine transferase where we have the N acetyl glu glucosamine along with the UDP. This N acetyl glucosamine moiety is transferred to one of its mannose residue and uh, via transferring it, it becomes the only UDP 
and then the process is going on and on and on like that and few minus residues are cleaved and few uh, n acetyl glucosamine is attached to it so that's that's how uh, the modification is taking place so you are the uh, maker of these things so whatever this is the manufacturing uh, manufacturing machine so wh what type of uh, thing we have to generate it's actually our goal so a manufacturer's goal is to produce different types of for example a manufacturer of a car has to produce different types of cars different uh, uh, color not in different color al 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 always in different structure in different mileage and all the having all these things differ so that's how in all this case it's going on sometimes it is producing maruti sometimes it is producing sumo sometimes it is producing ambassador and and like that so they are producing various different types of things by only uh, doing uh, by only using some technology and in this case we are using the technology of uh, enzyme like golgi man manosidase to cleave mannose we can attach uh, mannose residues via different bond formation we can attach uh, n acetyl glucosamine via n acetyl glucosamine transferes so using these enzymes uh, what they uh, what they did uh, what they normally do they actually attaching this all this residue on the way in such a way that they will produce a protein which is destined to deliver into a particular location so after doing all these things and finally you what you can see here in the red we have n acetyl neuramic acid which is negatively charged so finally it can also attach n acetyl neuramic acid with it but in case of n acetyl neuramic acid the carrier molecule of n acetyl neuramic acid is cyclic m cyc cmp or it is not cyclic it is a cytosine monophosphate not not udp it is cmp but in case of uh, n acetyl glucosamine and n acetyl muramic acid in both cases it is udp but in case of n acetyl muramic acid it is cmp so me memorize this this uh, because this this uh, usually uh, is going to shuffle between okay so that's the whole overall procedure so what we have we have a backbone we have a protein we have to cleave those glucose residues first which has been done in er lumen then it comes into the golgi lumen inside the golgi lumen the mannose residues are cleaved and as long as the mannose residues are cleaved new n acetyl glucosamine residues are being attached via the n acetyl glucosamine transferase activity which is having a carrier of udp and then in uh, uh, golgi mannosidase activity is going on and finally we have attached the n acetyl neuramic acid uh, using uh, the carrier of cyclic uh, using the carrier of cmp uh, and using uh, energy so that's how the overall procedure is working so what whatever uh, thing whatever protein is produced in er but we need to go through this overall systems to make a protein function properly so it's not only a procedure of making protein so if you make a protein your job is not done you have to make it properly fold so after properly folding of this protein which is called the post translation modification you have to attach different sugar moieties to it the sugar moieties is going to actually help them to target into particular locations not only to target into particular location but also it helps them to function as a, a, a combined molecules so in this picture we can look all these things together